I apologize to my viewers in advance. Today's video does not have anything new, but rather further clarification. YouTube user Greater Sapien produced a response to my Radioactive Anomaly series. The film seems to have gained a lot of attention. Surprisingly, much of the information that I presented in my video he accepts as factual. He agrees that solar flare radiation travels to near light speed. He agrees that Sunspot NOAA 720 delivered potentially lethal radiation comparable to that of the Van Allen belts. Hell, he even agrees that satellites do not live in the Van Allen belts, as some have erroneously claimed. In fact, the only criticisms he offers seem to be based on his own misinterpretations of three of the sources I used, hence the need for further clarification. In December 1998, CNN reported, New observations by an array of satellites show changes in the Earth's magnetic field can accelerate electrons in the belts to nearly the speed of light, transforming them into what some researchers describe as killer electrons. Under those conditions, the charge... The article then goes on to describe how under these conditions, particles penetrate deeper and are more dangerous to people and equipment. Gee, I wonder how the service module's bulk managed to shield the astronauts traveling through this flood of near light speed particles. So let me say here that I have to give props to Gerald White because it only took 4 minutes and 22 seconds for him to make me want to punch my computer screen and usually takes at least 7 minutes for someone who claims to be scientific to get under my skin. Did you see what he just did? He found evidence that under certain circumstances the Earth's magnetic field could accelerate particles to near light speed here. Note that it says can accelerate and under those conditions. He then states as an established fact that the particles the lunar astronauts encountered were at those special circumstances, with nothing to back that up. The CNN article in question goes on to say that scientists are expecting such circumstances and conditions to occur in late 2000 during the solar maximum, when solar activity reaches its peak and the sun is most likely to let loose a major solar flare. The said CNN article is no longer up. But various other news sources cover this incident in 1998, including this one from Goddard Space Flight Center, which contains this statement by Dr. Daniel Baker. The May 1998 event was a harbinger of what may come during the approaching solar maximum. Considering that the Apollo missions took place during a solar maximum, I'd say they were supposedly traveling through this radiation belt during a time when the electrons were at those special circumstances. He then makes a direct comparison of the Van Allen belts to this 2005 solar flare. Because both the belts and NOAA 720 are composed of 100 MeV protons, now let's look closely again at what White just did. He states here as a blanket fact that the Van Allen belts are composed of 100 million electron volt particles. Although at the very beginning of his video he shows that the Van Allen belts are made up of particles at a range of energy levels with a peak of 100 million electron volts. Belts are composed of protons and electrons with energies as high as 100 million electron volts. He then continues. This confirms Van Allen's research that indicated that astronauts passing through the belts would receive 100 rem per hour. Note that he stated that the astronauts would receive 100 rem per hour as a fact. He then shows a statement made by Van Allen that directly undermines his assertion. Our measurements show that the maximum radiation level as of 1958 is equivalent to between 10 and 100 rentions per hour, depending on... As you can see, Van Allen said the maximum was between 10 and 100 Renchen per hour, not a definite 100 rem as White states. Also, White is making an assumption here that Van Allen was discussing rem, which is Renchen equivalent in man, the absorption of radiation in flesh, because Van Allen himself only says Renchen and not rem, and there is a significant difference between the two of them, and these differences do matter. I'm really not sure what this guy's point here is. Firstly, for human flesh, one rem is indeed equivalent to one rentgen. Secondly, considering that all the Apollo astronauts returned with generally less than two rems of radiation, I'd say this conflicts with Dr. James's ranges. Thirdly, the Van Allen protons and electrons at 10 MeV are still quite dangerous. In the previous video, we calculated that the radiation doses absorbed from the Bremstrahlung of such electrons alone would be as high as 136 rem per hour. 
assuming of course that the CSM walls were rated at the 5 grams per square centimetre required to stop such electrons in the first place, which they weren't. In the same video, we calculated that only the aft heat shield was rated at 8 grams per square centimetre. The shielding for the rest of the ship was only rated at 3.33 grams per square centimetre. Maybe this guy should watch my videos more. White then locks down some facts. He shows that the Van Allen belts have a range of 1,000 to 5,000 kilometers for the inner belt and 15 to 25,000 kilometers for the outer belt. These, of course, are soft boundaries. He then shows that our satellites orbit safely beyond the outer border. Now, it should be noted that the Apollo 11 spacecraft went into orbit before zipping off to the moon, and its orbital distance was 185 kilometers above the Earth. That is well below the 1,000 kilometer inner belt border. He finishes this video by discussing the Van Allen Belt safe zones for satellites, and this part is what makes sitting through the whole thing worth it. And you don't have to take my word that satellites don't operate in the Van Allen Belts. On March 9, 2005, News Scientist, the world's number one science and technology news service, released an article called Lightning Linked to Gap in Radiation Belts. Lightning bursts in clouds are responsible for clearing the enigmatic safe zone for satellites lying between two donut-shaped radiation belts surrounding the Earth, say NASA researchers. The inner ring extends from 1,000 to 7,000 kilometers above the equator, while the outer ring starts at 13,000 kilometers and extends to 25,000 kilometers. The trapped radiation imperils both humans and spacecraft, so satellites and astronauts fly above or below the radiation belts or in the gap between them. As you can see, White is clearly stating here that the satellites and astronauts are capable of avoiding dangerous exposure in the Van Allen belts by either staying below them in a low Earth orbit or passing through them and getting into a higher orbit, like, say, the moon. <sighs> I have never seen someone misinterpret the information so badly. Yes, satellites avoid the perils of the Van Allen belts by operating either above them or below them or in between them. Satellites such as the Hubble operate below the beginning of the inner belt. GPS satellites operate between the two belts, and as explained previously, geostationary satellites operate beyond the end of the outer belt, but still within the safety of the magnetosphere. But getting into these higher orbits is no walk in the park. To protect the spacecraft's instruments, they are switched off and only activated once outside the radiation field. Even low Earth orbit satellites must be shut down during transit of the South Atlantic Anomaly, a region where the inner belt dips lower than usual, and the dose rates in the SAA are minuscule compared to those of the outer Van Allen belt. Humans, unlike satellites, don't have the luxury of having an off switch. For this reason, they remain in low orbit. In fact, other than Gemini 11, the only manned missions that have been purported to venture into the Van Allen belts are the Apollo moon flights. Considering the calculations we've shown that prove this is impossible, and considering that the belt radiation is at unsafe levels all the way around the Earth and into the polar orbit regions, exactly how do you propose getting astronauts through the perils of the belts and up into the safe zone? Teleportation? Was there any need for this video to be made?